You're listening to KEXP at 90.3 FM in Seattle, streaming worldwide at kexp.org. I'm Cheryl Waters, and down here in the studio with me, it's Kyle Kraft and Showboat Honey. Welcome. Nice to be back. So great always to have you. You played a show last night at the tractor. I heard you played Dolls of Highland. Uh-huh, the whole thing. What's your plan for tonight? Um, I'm going to play Showboat Honey. Sweet. You're going to do that right now. Oh, yeah. Kyle Kraft, live on KEXP. Hey, world. What up? Craft and Showboat Honey live on KEXP. All right.
listening to Kyle Kraft and Showboat Honey live on KEXP, and it is so fun always to have you here. Thanks for coming <laughs> in, Kyle. Thanks for having us. You have titled your new album, Showboat Honey, which is what you call your band. Mm -hmm. And tell me about this deep and rewarding relationship that you have with this band. Well, we, uh, so Kev and Billy recently, they're the most new uh, members of the band, but these guys here. Why don't you introduce the band? You're, doing, is, a lot, you're doing a lot of pointing yeah, and we're yeah, on yeah. radio. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, this is Haven Moltz from Alaska over here on the drums. And then Billy Slater from Arkansas, Ben Steinmetz from Buffalo, New York, Jeremy Kell on guitar from Mobile, Alabama, and Kevin Clark from Cleveland, Ohio. So, yeah. <laughs> it sounds like making this record was um, quite an intense process. Dare I say grueling? Uh, yeah. <laughs> tell tell <laughs> it, me. It was, it was fun, but, you know, uh, we, we did it. It took a, the... I don't know, I was pretty determined, you know? So, and so it was, we'd start at like 11 or noon and go until like three in the morning sometimes, most times, every day for like two, two months or something like that. <laughs> By the end of it, we were, we were um, kind of losing it, but, and we really lost it when I was like, yeah, let's scrap half of it and redo. Another, you know, another half. So I, I have a question about that. By scrapping, do you mean not use those songs or just re-record them? Did you do new songs completely? Yeah, I wrote, I wrote probably another half of the record um, in a couple of weeks. And then every, I just remember telling everyone, I was like, oh, you know, I think we should do it like do more songs and it felt like we had like gotten down from the mountain and somebody had like forgotten their backpack or something <laughs> with money in it and so we you know went back up the mountain <laughs> but ultimately you feel like it served the record well you happy with it yeah i'm happy with it did you reproach making this record differently than you've done in the past it sounds like you kind of have your own space now your own recording studio yeah yeah it's it, basically um kevin on piano here he he uh, has, it's like this garage next to his house. And um, yeah, I think it used to be like a, uh, like a grow house or something, right? <laughs> and so we, a lot, of, a lot of bands uh, use it for, for practicing. And we had recording equipment, you know, and just we're like, well, why don't we turn it into a studio, you know? Like Reptalians, those guys, yeah. they're, they're in there. The Shivas were in there a little while. Um, Blackwater Holy Light. Mm, love right. all yeah, it's bands. like yeah, it's like our uh, Bryson Cone. Yeah, it's it's cool. That's our little um, circle, you know. What did you like best about recording this record? Did you try new things? There's a lot of nice Mellotron on there. <clears throat> yeah, that was a big thing. It was the Mellotron. I mean, I I'd, I'd always wanted to like mess around with one, and it was it totally changed the. It just opens everything up, you know, in a way. Um, You've said that this record is centered around bad luck and good fortune hitting at the same time and also finding love. Tell me yeah. a little bit more about that. Um, well, yeah, I don't know. There was this like string of really bad luck I was having for a while. Like, uh, and in the process of all of that, it was like the only good thing in life sort of seemed like love, you know, and which, you know, I found in, um, yeah, she's in there. That he's in there, <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, it's. I don't know. I don't know if I'm not uh, if I'm the one to talk about love and what that is or means. But yeah. Do you write about love in your songs? Yeah, yeah. It, it, um, it's funny. I always, it, even in love songs, it, they always tend to lean towards the more. I don't know. There's always a jam or something in there. I'm like. I don't know why I'm like that, but... <laughs> it sounds like you wrote a love song for your new love against her protestations. Uh, yeah, she, whenever we first started seeing each other, she was like, do not write a song about me. And I was like, what? Okay. You know, and then eventually I wrote a few, and she was like, well, all right. You know, but... And you did a fun video for one yeah, of those. Yeah, that video is pretty funny, because it... We were trying to semi, re, you know, do a, like a little take on like the Pulp Fiction uh, the, the twist contest scene, and the the slow. Me and her, we didn't, we're not 
dancers really that was the first time we'd ever danced together actually was in that video and it was like to spirit in the sky blaring in the in the bar at like five in the morning that sounds fun <laughs> oh yeah it was a good time you grew up in a small town in Louisiana and it seems like you found a home in Portland what is it that you love about living in Portland um well uh, the community, I think, is, uh, you know, the musicians there, it never feels like competitive or anything. You know, I've lived in places where it f feels like that and it's just it's toxic, you know. It, um, but nobody's like that, I, for the most part. In, in Portland, it feels very like family. And there's just something to do every night, <laughs> you know. Do you feel like growing up in a small town in the South sort of shaped your artistic sensibility and your taste in music? Yeah, for for sure. I think I, I think maybe it kept me away from being exposed to like cooler music, um, which totally shaped the. I mean, you know, I was like 15 and like really digging on some like Aerosmith. So I mean, and it wasn't. It was like I I wouldn't have. I didn't hear the Beatles. I heard John Lennon before I heard the Beatles, you know? And it was because I read in this book, like Steven Tyler was like, yeah, this John Lennon guy. And I was like, oh, whoa. And I checked it out. And I was like, oh, cool, John Lennon's red. And I was like, oh, he's in this band, the Beatles. I'm going to check that out. And then I read where John Lennon was like, yeah, there's this guy, Bob Dylan. And that's when everything changed for the most part. It was when I first heard Dylan, you know? But yeah, it's, growing up in a small town is very, is very strange. It's it's kind of really genuinely the middle of like nowhere. It's it's three hours from Shreveport and three hours from New Orleans, which you know are the only two places I genuinely like to go in the state. So um, yeah, it's not close. It's just this little river town. It's got some characters. When you first moved away, was where was the first place that you went? Um, well, I went to college um, in, in Monroe, Louisiana, which is about an hour and a half from my hometown, but it's, there's not really much there. But a big city, <laughs> maybe, compared to your hometown. Yeah, compared to my hometown. And then after that, I moved to Austin, Texas, for about a, a year, and then took off on the road and toured um, pretty much on and off until I was in my like, early 20s, I think. Well, we're super happy you landed here in the Northwest. Me too. We're live here in the KEXP studios with Kyle Kraft and Showboat Honey. Tonight they play at the Tractor Tavern. They're playing songs from their new album, Showboat Honey. And what have you got next? Um, He's going to take a swig of water. Okay. This song is called Too Ugly for New York. for New York I got chain of trouble here If too cheap to buy time I got a car that don't go no
We're live in the KEXP studios with Kyle Kraft playing tonight at the Tractor Tavern in Seattle, the new album called Showboat Honey. All right, all right. This is the one, uh, this is that love song I was talking about. Death Wish Blue. That sounds like a love song. All right. One, two. Three, four. That was beautiful. All right. <clears throat> well, we're going to do a cover song. You always pick good covers.
time for me And I know my car don't start Yes, I'm stumbling And I know I play a bad guitar You're loving That's a good song. <laughs> you all made that sound great. That Thank is you. Kyle Kraft, live on KEXP. Thank you. Thank you for having us back. Thanks to all of you. That sounded wonderful. They're playing tonight at the Tractor here in Seattle, the new album Showboat Honey out on Sub Pop Records. We'll see you again soon, I hope. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, guys. You've got it tuned to KEXP Seattle. Discover new music at listenerpoweredkexp.org.